I'm presenting AB 1308 that will align public policy with scientific research. This measure would expand eligibility for youth parole hearing process to certain individuals who were 25 years of age or less when they committed a crime which they received a lengthy or a life sentence. Shall it be then 28 next year? How high do we go? Scientific evidence on adolescence and young adult development on neuroscience shows that certain areas of the brain, particularly those affecting judgment and decision making, do not develop until the early to mid 20s. There will be all kinds of scientific explanations. It begs the issue. The issue is justice. And finally, I must reinforce that this bill does not is not a free ticket for release. There is no mandate to reduce the sentence or release on parole, only the opportunity for a parole hearing after serving at least 15, 15 to 25 years in state prison, and I respectfully ask for your vote. The floor jockey's uh, explanation about the physiology and maturation of the, the cortex of the brain where one doesn't have the appropriate uh, abilities because of that lack of maturation to make judgment calls or make appropriate decisions Yet I find it very ironic that we allow 18-year-olds to vote. How much easier on the criminal will this institution go? Let them all out. <sighs> um, it is tragic that we as learned civil adults reduce ourselves on this floor to politicizing tragedy across the state. I deeply resent the constant reference or suggestion that because there are some who want to look at research data on brain development, comprehensive circumstances that lead young people to make bad decisions, that that suggests that we are soft on crime and don't support law enforcement. I personally take offense to that repeated assertion to suggest that it's appropriate to share case histories on youthful offenders is against the law. Youthful offenders have the right to have their names and the details of their cases protected. I am neither soft on crime. I respect and believe in the role of law enforcement. And I also believe that race, class, and inherent implicit and explicit bias has a direct effect on the judicial system. And to deny that fact is to suggest that you are living in a past era. I hope that we as a body could come to a place where we could engage in civil fact-based fact dialogue about the criminal justice system that is current, that is relevant, that is reflective of what we know today based on the population that's incarcerated. It would never occur to me to stand here and to suggest that a group of people when I don't know all of their circumstances are inherently bad and beyond worth of our engagement and investment. And I just have to say in our last week of session that that constant argument is getting old. If we're going to be policymakers and make decisions about what's in the best interest of California, then I suggest we all check our bias at the door, read current research, and not base it on past experience that's outside of the confines of service as a state senator.
I'll be supporting AB 1308 today. Ice 22, nose 14, the measure passes.